This video needs absolutely no introduction. Just take a look at this thing. Hello everyone, Chris here. I hope you're all well and today we're going to have some fun. We're going to do a very creative 3D printed project by Greg Zumwalt. As you know, I usually scan Instructables quite often and I saw this project a couple of months ago and the minute I saw it in action, I knew that I had to build one. It's a very unique mechanism. A lot of thought and work went into creating this. Greg did an awesome job, but let's just start and I'll show you the Instructable that Greg made. Here's Greg's video of the finished model in action. You can see we've got a giraffe lifting a marble from one side of the slide to the other, a couple of elephants. It's just a really fun 3D printed item. I can't get enough of watching this thing work. And the Instructable is very elaborate, well put together by Greg. If you were to try to build one of these, Greg has a lot of great designs. Be sure you check them out. But he lays out all the different things you need. He has all the parts here for you to print so you're ready to go. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to show you all the printed parts you're gonna need. I put my own spin on a few of them, so that might be kind of fun. I'll share all that with you, as well as the non-printed parts and how you put this whole thing together. Now I'm going to tell you before you jump into this, it is very crucial that you get your 3D printed parts right and you get it set up just like Greg recommends because it can be kind of finicky and hard to get together to make it work correctly. So just be sure you're following all the steps as we go through. If I miss any, I'll try to make up for them and get you all the info that you need to make your 3D printed circus successful. So let's jump right into it. We'll check out all the parts it's going to take to put this thing together. So here's all the printed parts you need. I tried to lay these out so I can show you all of them. There's a lot. Hopefully I didn't miss any. If I did, I will touch on it later in the video. All of this was printed in Jesse PLA from Printed Solid. I printed mine at a 0.2 layer height. Greg rec recommends a 0.15 layer height, but I don't think we're going to have any issues. Except for the track slide part, he wants you to print that at a 0.06 layer height. I'm guessing so it's a lot smoother for the marble to travel on. So just keep that in mind. So let's just go through some of these. You have your base part. You have your M8 bolts right here. These are 6 millimeter ones. The shorter ones, you need 6 of those. Then you need two of the little longer ones. These are eight millimeters long. The elephants and the giraffe, there's a lot of different parts to those, so let's talk about those separately. We'll just skip over that for now. You're gonna need one of these 36 tooth gears, one of the compound gears. You need a gear axle, the compound geared mount, the gear that goes on the motor, your giraffe guide, that's this piece right here. This is the only one that I couldn't print on the Prusa. You're going to have to have a 300, 300, something like that to print one of these. You have your lift magnet guide. You need one of those. You have your lift magnet. You have the rack that the, the giraffe rides on. Your slide arm. You have your slide guide, the slide itself. This is your top piece. Then you have another axle. These are really similar, one's a little longer than the other, but you have another one of these axles for the giraffe to rotate on. You have your wagon back and bars. I already glued those together, separate pieces. You have the mount piece that the giraffe goes on. I already glued that on as well. Then your wagon wheels, and then the other side of the wheels with the axle on it. Your yoke gear, your yoke gear axle, and then the yoke piece. So that's pretty much all of them, but let's talk about the elephant and the giraffe pieces for a minute. And then for the elephants, you have separate sections. So you've got a left and right piece, but they're mirrored on both sides of the circus. So you have to have them mirrored one set one way, one set the other way. Later in the video, when I install them, it'll make it just a little bit more obvious, but when you're looking through all the STL files, make sure you take that into account. You're going to have to print one set and then the other set. So flip them over, basically. In the slicer, you can probably just mirror it with Z, and that'll get them in the correct orientation. 
To do both elephants, you'll need four lower leg pieces, four upper leg pieces, and then four of the elephant wheels. Also, two of these little black gears go in between these wheels on their back legs. For the non-printed parts, for the motor that's going to make it move, you're going to need a 30 RPM N20 geared motor. Some sort of power supply, I'm just going with a 5 volt supply. I got one of these terminals so I can just put wires underneath them to make all this work. Should make it a little easier. The magnets for this build are kind of hard to find. I'll do my best to leave links to all of this. But you're going to need roughly 32 of these 3 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter magnets. The design is very clever. It uses a lot of these to put everything together so they move fluidly. But again, kind of tricky to get some of these. And then you're going to need two of these 6 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter magnets. And you need two 8 millimeter ball bearings. You're also going to need some sort of piano wire. I cut these down to be roughly 10 millimeters in length. You might be able to get away with some type of coat hanger or something. They are 2 millimeter in diameter. You can probably be pretty creative rather than trying to find piano wire nowadays. But just note, you use those as kind of an axle. And then you'll need some sort of rubber band for the giraffe action, but most of us can find one of those that's the right size around the house. So there's all the parts. So I've already made up the right elephant for the circus, but let's go ahead and do the left one. Remember, you need the correct orientation for these parts. So the left elephant is going to look like this, right one looks like this. Pay attention to their feet. So first off, just line this one up the best you can, and I'm going to use 3D Gloop to put it together. And once you've got the two halves together, you have the pupil and the eye portion we can just glue in. I did print all these little small sections on rafts just to get them to stick down to the bed. The little pieces are kind of tricky. So the eye pieces just fit in there like that, and then I'm going to glue them from the back just so it looks a little better. So there we go. Now both of our elephants are assembled. And let me show you on this one how you put this all together. So with those tiny 3 millimeter magnets, you just press them into these parts. Now be aware if they're opposing or if they're matching, they need to stick together. So just be conscious of all that when you're putting it all together. So you have the upper leg portion, you put one in the back, one in the front, and then you have a magnet on the side, both sides of the elephant that that needs to stick to. So there's the upper leg. And then same with the lower leg. You have two magnets, they just need to stick together with the upper leg and the wheel. Like that. And then your wheel section, both of those have a magnet in there as well. They need to stick to that lower leg piece. And they sandwich the gear in between. And they need to be 180 degrees apart from each other. So we'll set that one in here like this. We'll slide our gear in just kind of sets on that wheel and then the magnet on the other side 180 degrees apart from it so we'll just put that on the back and the leg sections actually hold this whole thing together and there he is completed so the whole operation there is just held by those magnets but that will let it rotate freely pretty cool design I really like it so we'll have two of these guys and just a side tip when you're putting these magnets in these parts, I did clean some of these up with a 3 millimeter drill bit. Don't get carried away, but it does make them a little easier to put in. Also, some of these that have the 8 millimeter tapped, I ran through those with a tap just to make sure they were clean. It makes the bolts go in a lot easier. And then we have the star of the show, our giraffe friend here. Now, Greg intended for you to print this in two halves and then glue it together, which I did. But then he painted all of the brown with just paints. So you print it all out in yellow and then paint over it. I actually recreated the whole thing for MMU2 if you would like to use it. So I'll leave a link in the description with all those files. But all the spots have been divided up. I separated the ears so you could do those multicolor as well as the horns. But you do have two halves. You have two eyepieces, two pupils, two horns, two ears, and then the mouthpiece. And you just glue it all together. One thing to note when you're putting your giraffe together 
is that inside the mouth, you're going to need some magnets. If the mouth just looks like this. Load two of those M3 magnets down in here. I pushed them down with an M3 by 10 millimeter screw. It worked pretty well but load two up so he's able to catch that ball a lot easier. But he turned out pretty well. So before we get started building, I will remind you about the 3D printed parts. Greg did use Ultimakers to create these, so that might have helped his accuracy some versus some of the DIY lower cost 3D printer kits. But you have to keep your tolerances pretty tight or you're not gonna be successful. He does recommend that 0.15 millimeter layer height and printing at 20% infill except for the marble track. He went all the way down to a 0.06 layer height to make sure it's smooth enough for that marble to travel. And I can verify that that is important. So take that into consideration. These parts have to be pretty close. All right, let's go ahead and jump into building. So now that we got all that out of the way, we can start to build. Now, to me, this is probably the trickiest part to get right. The giraffe actually sets in here and it pivots on it. Make sure your threads are clean. I like to use these two posts here to know which direction to install it in. It probably doesn't really matter, but I always put the threaded part on this side. And you have to make sure that this is completely straight when you glue it down. What I did is grab a ceramic magnet. You need to make sure that this axle part here, the mount, is flush with the ring around this bottom part. So it's the right length to hold that giraffe. All I did, put some glue on it, set it in there, and then I set it down on this magnet so that it would sandwich it and make sure it was the right height. And just make sure that it's nice and straight. Again, one of the trickier things to get right. And then those two posts, when you mount your giraffe, they're to the back of the giraffe. So he sets in here just like this. And he attaches with the shorter of the two axle pieces. You can just thread him in. And there he is. And then your wagon back and cage. I just glued that cage on the front. Again, using 3D glue. Then you can slide your giraffe in here, kind of turn him sideways. You can fit him through there and just be careful with his horns. The bars are flexible enough. You can kind of spread them apart to get him in. And now he's in. Then you can just put some glue down to attach the back and the bars to the base. Now for your wheels with the axle section, you need to press a couple of magnets in there. These stick to that slide piece, so don't really worry about polarity on these quite yet. You can fix that on the slide. The axles just go through the front of the cage piece. One on each side. Like that. Then the other wheel section goes on the back. Like so. And I just put the hub part, there's a little hub on the back of this wheel, I put that facing in. And then you need a rubber band that's roughly 100 millimeters long. This one should do just fine. We wrap it around the tail here on the giraffe and the bottom of the cage so that he has some snap back. There it is installed. It actually took me a little bit to try to figure out the best way to put this on. This one might be just a little bit too tight, so I might have to go down to a little smaller band. But Greg has a great picture on the Instructables of how he did it. But now you can see he's got some snap so he can move up and down to pick up that marble. You just don't want the tension to be too tight or that motor's not gonna be able to drive him down. And our giraffe cage is done. Then we move on to the base and we have the larger gear that has the peg on it. It's just gonna sit on here like this. And then we have our axle piece that goes through to screw down into the base to hold this on. There it is installed. Don't get too carried away tightening that down. It still has to spin freely. Then we have our yoke piece and our lift magnet guide. Pay attention to how these edges are beveled when you put this on. So the chamfer actually goes down and your guide is gonna slide in here right like this. And you can glue it in place. Once that's glued on, your yoke gear mount goes on here right like this. It just has two tabs. And then your yoke gear goes on top of that. And then this is the longer of the two threaded axle pieces. That gear compound mount, it does press fit in here in the yoke pretty well with just those two tabs, but you might want to consider putting a little bit of glue back here, just depending on how tight the tolerances are on your printed parts. Just make sure that gear spins freely. Then you take your slide mount and your base piece, the side with the two holes, and we're gonna, and we're gonna attach it with the two longer 
eight millimeter screws. These are eight millimeters in length. There's that. You can go ahead and load your slide in the track here. We're just gonna kind of set it in the middle, line it up with that gear. And on the back of that slide piece, we're just gonna thread in these two guide pins. These pins were actually two of the trickier parts for me. Just make sure that other side, you get them cleaned out good because you're gonna to need to thread into that side as well. Again, I'm using an eight millimeter tap to help me out. And then that yoke section lines up on that red gear. The pin of that gear goes in the bottom of the section. And then your lifter piece goes over here to the right. And it should line up with this track, just like that. Now it's time to install the motor. We have our rack piece here. The motor goes inside here. Our motor, this is one of those gear type motors. I just soldered some ends on it and I am going to connect it directly to the power supply. I just bought a five volt power supply and it came with this barrel to terminal converter. So I'm just gonna put my leads in here. You might wanna install a switch or an adapter port, whatever you might wanna do, but this was the quickest way for me to get this done. So that's how I'm gonna use the motor. But the motor goes through the printed part just like this. It's gonna be flush here on the top. And then your motor gear, it actually has a flat spot in the center hole. It's just gonna go on that motor shaft. You just want that motor shaft to be flush with the top of that gear. And then back to our slide base, you have timing dots here that should line up with your slide and your yoke gear. And then you can put that rack piece on the base. You have a groove on the base that's going to fit on the yoke. It's going to go on just like this. All three of those dots should line up. And then on the other side, you can mount it with some of those 3D printed screw pieces. There's the back with our screws putting it all together. And you can see here on the front, all those dots will line up. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, it's just trying to give you an idea of where the middle is going to be. Next, you'll need to glue your piano wire or whatever you might use as an axle here on your lifter piece. Also, we will have to glue a 6 millimeter magnet here on the end. So get that prepared. And once you have your magnet in there, all this piece actually does is keep that marble from running down the slide until the draft puts it down. So grab your top piece here and then your magnet arm. Make sure you get the alignment right. You want the angle to match the top of that top piece there. And then we'll slide that in. And the lifter section is actually going to pick it up from the side. So this will set down on top of the mechanism. Mind the wires. There is a little gap. You can put the wires in for that motor. and it will attach with a couple more of those eight millimeter by six millimeter printed screws. And then we can flip it around. And we're gonna put on our giraffe guide, that large printed piece. You want the teeth to go towards the back. That's where the gears for the wagon are gonna ride on. So it just goes here and straddles those two pins. And then again, you'll attach it left and right here with two of those M8 by eight millimeter 3D printed screws, the little longer one. Then from there, we can go ahead and set our assembled wagon section on the guide. I think I said to put the hubs towards the inside. I actually like them better on the outside, so they go in this guide back here a little bit better. So I flip those wheels around, but it's just going to sit on here like this. And then your giraffe's tail is going to set on the back here so that it will raise and lower it. And then you've got your two gears that go on the axles. And then your lifter piece, you want these towards the inside where it has the ledge. It just goes on those axles. It's gonna be held on by those magnets. And then two more of those M8 by six millimeter screws are gonna attach your lifter to that slide piece. And note, I did go ahead and add a jack back here just so it's easier to use. You don't necessarily have to, but I wanted to keep the wires out of the way a little bit better. So I did put that on there. There is a spot in the printed part to add one. And now is another great time to go ahead and test and make sure everything's working thus far. And it looks to be everything's moving nice and easy. Our giraffe's doing his thing. Nothing's getting hung up. 
If you are having issues, find the part that's getting hung up and try to resolve it. Sometimes you just need to put it together again. Maybe it didn't go on exactly right, but there is a little bit of tweaking involved. There it is in operation from the back. It's a really ingenious mechanism, I have to say. Next up, I want to go ahead and test to make sure the giraffe can lift that ball bearing and set it down successfully. So we're going to add our track. I just kind of spun this side on. You might want to go ahead and glue this down. This is pretty tight over on this side, so you can probably get away with a press fit. But if you want to make it permanent, go ahead and add some glue. And we'll go ahead and throw our ball bearing in here. And let's see if the giraffe can go ahead and complete a cycle. And it looks like we're in pretty good shape. Now, I did have to do just a little bit of tweaking to get this going. Because they're 3D printed parts, you do have some tolerance in here. There's a little bit of slop actually in some of the threaded parts, the base. So I had to shift it around just a little bit. The draft was just a little bit too far away. But I was able to slide the parts up just enough to get it working. So I'm happy with the result. I will remind you on this slide, the track, I had to print it a couple of times because of the resolution. You want the resolution to be pretty low. I ended up printing this one at a 0 0.07 so that it was smooth enough for the ball to slide down it. That ball does get stuck occasionally, but eventually it'll make it all the way down. And you can run two at a time if you wish. Now all we have left to do is put the elephants on either side of our wagon here. Remember on the elephants you do have one left and one right. These feet, the nubs right here, glue into the holes on the side of the wagon. And then that gear should just follow the same track that's in the middle of the wagon on that top piece. And here's the elephants after I glued them on. You got to be kind of careful and make sure you get these straight so they'll run on that track. I just pulled the whole thing off and kind of looked at it from the top to make sure it was okay left to right. But now we can just put the whole thing back on. And now everything's assembled. We're ready for our final finished run. And there you have it. The Marble Vader Circus by Greg Zumwalt. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoy watching it work. Very nicely done, Greg. So there it is, the Marvel Vader Circus by Greg Zumwalt. Greg, again, you did an awesome job with this design. I knew there was a lot of time and effort put into it, and it is very, very well done. Please consider checking out all of Greg's designs and maybe supporting him. I know this won't be the last one of his projects that I 3D print for myself. Hopefully you liked this video. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.